So today I'd like to talk about the uh, vanishing of Ethan Carter, um, which is an interesting uh, story-driven um, indie game uh, with really outstanding graphics. But uh, specifically I'd like to talk about how I personally didn't like the game. And I'm not trying to say that it's a bad game or that you won't like the game, but... Um, I didn't like the game, and so I think it's worth talking about uh, why I didn't like the game, um, uh, just from, from a game design perspective. Uh, so, uh, firstly, the game sort of got me interested. Uh, it's um, developed by the uh, uh, like creative team uh, behind like Gears of War, Judgment, and Bulletstorm, and... Uh, basically the guys from People Can Fly, uh, and, and, uh, you know, great graphics, and I, I like the idea that it's, it's a weird, uh, fiction, um, uh, the, uh, weird fiction is, is the genre that H.P. Lovecraft wrote, uh, before there was, like, um, really horror as a uh, emerged as a genre there was just this idea of, of weird fiction and and so uh it, it sort of has a you know lovecraftian feel and and uh you know a game that sort of tackled weird fiction seemed uh really appealing to me anyway um so uh so um Basically, at the very start of the beginning, it, very start of the game, it says, this game features no hand-holding. And it's kind of a weird statement to make, but it's, it's very apt in describing the game, and I would say that's its flaw. I'm not sure why they set up, uh, set that as their sort of design goal or what their, your, they want your first impression to be of the game, but, like, the fact that it contained no hand-holding kind of ruined the game for me because I didn't know what the game was. I didn't know what to do. So, um, it's kind of a puzzle game, and I feel like the closest analogy is, uh, Myst. Um, but even Myst, I think, had more direction I mean, the, the puzzles in Myst were kind of obtuse, and, and I feel like, you know, some of the puzzles are... I guess the, the puzzles aren't as obtuse once you know the basic mechanics of the game, but they never tell you the basic mechanics of the game, so I really had no idea what I was doing when playing. So, I mean, the puzzles aren't super obtuse, but, like, they don't introduce the mechanics, and you need to understand the mechanics, um to, uh, solve the, the puzzles, and then once you do get the mechanics, the puzzles aren't, like, super challenging, but, but the, the weird part is that the game is, is mostly, it's open world, and so you don't know where the puzzles are, I mean, at least Myst had it certain regions, so this was me, I, I sat down, I played the game, I'm like, hey, this seems really cool, and then I'm like, okay, I walked down the, um, the the path and there was um basically uh nothing um for a bit and then uh hey everything looks really cool and then i apparently missed the first whole puzzle thing completely at the beginning i i i don't even know if the puzzles were were optional or not uh i mean I don't know, I, I mostly follow a walkthrough for the game, um, which I guess ki kind of ruins it. I mean, I thought it would be a narrative-focused game, but I, I, I mean, personally, the narrative I, I didn't think was very interesting or compelling, but perhaps I was uh, biased by my frustration with, with the actual game. Um, so anyway, I walked down this path, and then, um, there are a few things you can interact with, but, like, I, I guess I missed some of the other things you could interact with, so I didn't really know. And then there's one mechanic, um, that I just totally didn't understand, um, 
uh, that's kind of important for finding clues. Um, I don't know, it, it, the, the, it just seemed like a little effect and I had no idea what was going on. Uh, so, yeah, so then I'm like, okay, well, I'm sure I'll figure out, you know, I'll get some other evidence or whatever and come back here. So I kept walking on the path, skipped the second puzzle, the third puzzle, and then I encountered, like, um, another puzzle, and again, I didn't understand the mechanics, so I didn't know how to solve that puzzle. Um, so then I'm like, well, I think I quit and then uh, loaded for my save, uh, and it didn't save anything. It didn't save where I was in the world, so then I was kind of pissed, and I started from the beginning and walked everywhere. I guess I had nothing to save because I accomplished nothing um, in terms of the puzzle, so the autosave is, is a little weird. Um, so anyway, then I go to this other thing, and there's kind of this confusing puzzle, um, but the puzzle sort of relies on information that you need to get elsewhere, which I totally didn't have because I didn't know that I was supposed to go elsewhere. So then, at this point, I'm just like, I don't get this game at all, and, you know, I, I looked for a walkthrough and, um, you know, spent the rest of the game with the walkthrough, but, uh, I mean, I think... In general, it's it's sort of interesting, you know, uh, I mean, uh, that, that they're trying this sort of open-world puzzle thing, and I mean, certainly lots of people have enjoyed the game, and I think there's definitely, oops, definitely uh, things the, the game does well, but, um, uh, like, I mean, just for me, right, like, it's narrative driven and you basically solve these little puzzle fragments out of uh order and and uh i mean i don't even know if they're i mean there's a sort of an order but i mean i think you can solve a lot of them in order i mean like i walked past like several puzzles because i just had no idea they were there and and i pre-ordered so i got this special spoiler map and all the spoiler map does well, they have, they have two maps. One says mild spoilers, and it's just a map. So, I would argue that's not a spoiler at all. That's a map. And then the mild spoiler ones just gives you the locations of where the puzzles are. Um, but since you there's no, like, in-game map, I think it's tough to sort of map that to where things are in the world. And, I mean... Even though, like, I was following a walkthrough and I knew more or less where I had to go, I still managed to get lost in the world, and... <sighs> I mean, honestly, if you look at the puzzles, there are not really that many of them, and they're not really super interesting puzzles. And, I mean, uh, certainly Never Ending Nightmares have been criticized for, you know, not giving enough sort of narrative hooks early on, not giving you sort of a motivation to go. But, I mean, um, like, I didn't really feel like the game was building up to something. I mean, it was just like, you could get these flashes of events, and, and they would reveal a little bit more about the plot. But, I mean, mostly, it's, it's not... I mean, there, there's a couple things, I guess, where it sort of says, like, oh, go here next, but of course you don't know where here is, because there's no map, and blah, blah, blah. But, like, there definitely there was um, times where I felt like, uh, well, I mean, most of the game, I, I didn't really feel like there was sort of a driving force forward, and I didn't really know uh, what was going on. Um, yeah, so, I mean, uh... It, it definitely wasn't for me, and I mean, certainly people who enjoy, you know, walking around the, the very beautifully rendered world and, um, you know, just sort of taking it easy and, and finding clues and mysteries and, and maybe who can, you know, have better luck with, with the game mechanics than I certainly could enjoy it. But I'm, I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, from a game de design perspective, was no hand-holding at all the, the right design decision? And, and I mean, at least for me, it wasn't. Um, 
you know, and, and the real question is, like, can you get a game without hand-holding that accomplishes the same thing? And, um, you know, uh, would that be any worse of a game, or would that be a better game? And, and certainly with any sort of puzzle aspects, or even in terms of, of navigating the world of NeverEnding Nightmares, uh, we tried very hard to uh, make it clear what you were supposed to do next or make it so you couldn't, uh, you know, um, make, uh, you know, couldn't get lost or couldn't, um, have trouble, uh, you know, advancing through the game. And certainly, uh, you know, some have argued the game is, is too linear or too easy, but, like, I think it, it's sort of an admirable goal to try and communicate the game mechanics so people can't get stuck. And maybe that's, you know, with with messages that pop up, or maybe, you know, the, the character has a few lines he says to himself, like, five of them throughout the entire world at random points. Uh, I mean, maybe they could have given him a little dialogue, or, you know, maybe a smoke effect pops up in the, in the background, and you say, oh, I should investigate that. Um, so I don't know, I mean, maybe, maybe this sort of open world puzzle is, is, uh, is, uh, something people really like, but I had uh, trouble with it. So anyway, thanks for watching.